Well, good afternoon. The uh, conditions in New Orleans are getting worse by the day. And, and we're as we learn more and we see more video, it's uh, incredibly getting even worse, the situation in New Orleans Sorry, right in now. Mississippi, the whole Gulf, Gulf Coast area, parts of it are just wiped out. New Orleans is a city in ruins. Black smoke from a warehouse fire billows into the sky, and the floodwaters, though neutralized, run deep with the stench of rotting corpses and raw sewage. Governor Huntsman has upped Utah's offer from 1,000 to 2,000 refugees. Still, remember, 50,000 may go to Texas, and eventually we'll probably get some First evacuees. refugees are in Utah from the hurricane-struck regions of the south. That's first. Governor Huntsman declares a state of emergency in Utah. The state Camp Williams is housing several hundred people evacuated from New Orleans. Our objective immediately is to get them back with their families, wherever they are, help them get to where they want to go, and that's uh, over the next couple of days. We're going to put huge efforts into that. Several of the evacuees say they are grateful for Utah's hospitality. But Utah, I'm so glad we came here. Everybody's been so nice and it's just wonderful. The governor says Utah's response to the disaster has been effective, and officials from other areas are coming here to take notes. Well, I want to make sure that officials in Portland are coming here to see how we've done it before they accept people. I think they want to learn how to do it right. Well, this was obviously a big story nationwide, and the fact that when we found out that our governor had agreed to house 1,000 to 2,000 evacuees here in Utah. We knew pretty early on that we're probably going to have a lot of media attention and not just local media attention. Uh, the lieutenant governor for the state of Louisiana is a good friend of our lieutenant governor. And in fact, he sent an email, um, basically said, you know, we know you hosted the Olympics. You might have some facilities in case that we might want to send some people because we're evacuating. Initially, we did not know how many were coming anywhere from 500 to 2,000. Um, we anticipated that this would probably be a significant media event. Usually we, we make plans for evacuating people out of a hazard area, and now we're actually receiving people coming out of a hazard area in another state, and we've never done anything like this. They started coming Saturday night. The first people got to Camp Williams Saturday night. I was out there Monday. Things were a little crazy. When we learned that, we had, that Utah had the possibility of accepting the evacuees from the Gulf states at the governor's press conference, we were able to get in touch with their uh, public information officers quickly. And one of their first ideas was, we need to do a joint information center. Uh, I was very happy about that. I've worked with one or two before. They're very helpful. And uh, I knew that this would be something that would be ongoing for several days. One of the reasons why we felt it was so important to put together a joint information in the first center in the first place is because we knew that there would be all aspects of state government involved in this process, um, from providing basic food and clothing and shelter for these people who have had nothing for up to a week. Pretty much every state agency was involved, and that's what we found pretty early on, that the governor had involved every aspect of state government. So what we felt like it would be best to do is provide a one-stop calling center for the news media to be able to access whoever they needed to in this process. The way that we uh, set this particular operation up is we took the incident command system and made it an overlay onto the National Guard that had the infrastructure to be able to do all the functions that we needed to accomplish to do this. And, uh, of course, one of the uh, central components of, a, of an incident command system is the public information piece. The response was overwhelming. It was four, five, and six teams from every news, particularly the TV stations, sending out that many cameras with that many reporters from each station. And it just was incredible. Not to mention the newspapers, the radio stations, the smaller papers in the area, plus national media. I think for those who organized the Joint Information Center, it was very difficult and a lot of work to set those things up. On the other hand, for us, it was very easy. We had three phone numbers to call and were able to get to a person and have the question answered, regardless of who it was.
One of the most important pieces for us to be able to even start this process was to be able to have the governor's office support in, in, in forming this joint information center. Everyone came and were willing to do whatever we asked and we were able to utilize talents that, that people had and I mean people really checked their egos in at the door. Flexibility is paramount and for people to be able to let go of their turf, let go of their own needs and focus on the, the greater good, if you will, is critical. What we've tried to do here is follow some of the national policy as far as incident command. Um, we, we have key people in, in key positions to help maintain the functionality of our Joint Information Center. Someone always answered the phone. I never called and didn't have it answered on second or third ring. And if they didn't have the information, they were very good about saying, let me find out and I'll call you. The biggest lesson I think we learned is information doesn't just automatically come in to a JIC. We sometimes like to think it does, um, but really it, it was up to us to be a little bit aggressive in going out and gathering that information. It's vital that you have someone that's trained in public information. In my job, I have the responsibility in making those phone calls to the Joint Information Center to set up the story, to gather the information that's needed. When I reach someone in the Joint Information Center that's not trained in public information, then I will most likely go to other resources. When we first started, we, had, um, we were trying to go meet with every news crew one escort per news crew and we became overwhelmed. One of the problems that we ran into is the Joint Information Center was closed on the weekends. We don't take weekends. <laughs> During Hurricane Katrina I worked for 14 days straight without taking a day off so I think number one is you have to be available when the media needs you. They answered the questions we had and they helped us to find story ideas that we might not have thought about had there not been a Joint Information Center. That allowed us to get on top of the story much faster and cover it even better for our viewers. You have to have the support of the people who are in charge, which we have had 100% support, which has made things much easier for us because it's easier to be able to organize and disseminate information when you have support from, from the top. Reporters understand change and really well because our days are always changing, but just have that plan in place, know basically what you want to do, who's going to staff it, what will be available, what hours you'll be available for the media. The Joint Information Center and the command staff out there would hold the daily briefings for the media. And quite honestly, that took much of the heat, if you will, off the governor's office. The feedback that I'm getting, at least from our local news media, is that they've been very pleased with the access they've had, it's not complicated. It's very easy for them, which is, it makes, I think, for, for better reporting. I would say it, whatever expense it takes for your public information officers to get the training, spend it, because it's money well spent in the end. And if, if your PIOs can learn from other areas of the nation that are doing things well, send them there. Let them know, let them learn from the people who have done it before so that they, when they come back they can build a system that works for you. The two functions of, uh, and, and people or people uh, that I need to have with me uh, when I'm out here doing anything is I need to have a finance person and I need to have uh, the Joint Information Center. We had all kinds of questions. We wanted the questions answered, we wanted stories to be able to do, and we had one place to go to. And that was great. And the feedback we receive from them, uh, from the local media that we work with on a regular basis and have a pretty good relationship uh, from them, the feedback has been, you know, we've appreciated this. And I, I believe that that has helped in our relationship with the media. Having the Joint Information Center for this event was critical. It was absolutely the very best thing we could have done.